He went out of his way. He felt an obligation to the gay community. First, to give them a safe place to be, and then when they started getting, when AIDS started, he felt an obligation to look after the gay community. I was not old enough to drink in a nightclub. I was, I was 16 or 17, but Bill allowed me to come in because he understood about the gay youth. And coming to Grable, finding a place that you could go into and see all of your friends who were just like you. And you got to kick up your heels and you got to holler and act just like a sissy, like you could never do on the streets. We have been through the stages of life together, me and my friends. It, it is all because of the Paddock Club. It is all because of what Bill Brock started. Well, after I met Bill, my mother moved to Hawaii, and I had a home. And so Bill said, let's start gathering at your house. It's a safe place for us to meet. That struck Bill. It bothered him that the only place we could go to be safe was to go to Raleigh or have to hide somewhere. And we were literally hiding at my house. That's when the idea first came in his mind is that Greenville has enough gay people, it should have a gay bar. The Paddock Club came up for sale and it was a country western straight bar. So Bill toyed with the idea of buying that bar and if he did, it would take everything that he had to buy that bar because he was going through a divorce. He ventured out and took what capital he had and bought the bar with the understanding that he would keep the bar straight for one year. When Bill's family found out about it, of course, they were in shock. His mother had the minister come to him and talk to him and pray with him and everything. His wife was extremely devastated. She had no idea at all that Bill was, was bisexual or gay. Well, once he turned gay, I'd say for the first six months or the first year, he almost lost everything because people didn't come out. They didn't feel safe. Straight people would ride through their rednecks once they found out it was a gay bar and harass you. Hell, they'd get out of the car and beat the shit out of you. So you'd park your car and run like hell to get in the bar, hoping somebody wouldn't catch you and beat you. So then Bill decided to hire security. She knew that when you pulled up in that paddock club, nobody was going to bother you. So for once, the people had a safe place to go, and that's where Bill wanted to provide. The first time I met Bill Brock was I rounded the corner into the bar, and he always sat right at the end of the bar with his hand on the bar with his fingers like this. And he might look at you, but he would go right back to it. And I guess that was when he was making his assessment. Well, then I came with Bob and Steve and they said, don't let him buy you too many drinks or you'll have to pay for them. And you know what pay for means. <laughs> the way I discovered uh, that Greenville had a gay club was by the people that I came out around. And we made a plan to go there. And it's the first time I'd ever seen a guy in drag. And we had the best time. The bar actually became a melting pot for everybody. If you wanted to come in drag, you came in drag. If you wanted to come in leather, you came in leather. It was the first place, the first bar that, in, in, that gay men and lesbians came together in one group and got along. And then when AIDS broke out, he felt responsible. He felt like he had an obligation to the gay community, to those with HIV. 
Nobody else was going to look after him. When the 80s started and HIV became a huge factor for the gay community, Bill started to worry that because people came to the club and had a good time and then went home, paired up and went home, that he may be facilitating the spread of this. I mean, he did everything in his power to put up educational material, make sure that we had uh, fundraisers. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like for y'all to be able to understand what the kids have done. They worked mighty hard this week. And also, the tips that y'all have given them tonight, they are donating at the AIDS also. And I think that's marvelous. We didn't take this all coming out. And one thing about it, I bet you Green will start the 14th year in this club this year. And I do know we got some great people in the city of Green who are concerned about AIDS. This really makes me feel good. The only thing is we had to go over it again. We do it over Friday night. We'll have a much larger crowd give it all the AIDS. I mean, he started contributing money to people that were HIV, who couldn't pay the rent, who couldn't pay their light bill, uh, whose parents had kicked them out. In fact, he actually came to Raleigh and approached Paul and Art at CC's and said, listen, I'm just a little town bar. If I can afford to do it, and you're a big city bar and all the profits that you make, you need to chip in and we need to start helping the community. We had made money off the gay and lesbians. We need to give back to that community now. They need us. We've got to do something for them because nobody else is doing anything. I would go up every other weekend to visit him after his health started going deteriorating and I would try to get him to go to the bar and he would say no, he just didn't feel like going. One thing I did get him to do, and I'm, I'm so happy, we were invited to a Christmas party in Aiden and Bill didn't want to go. So I came down and I just about had to dress him to get him to go. So Bill went. Well, that was Bill's last public appearance but I'd say there was a hundred and some people there at that party that night. It was a fantastic Christmas party. Well, hell, Bill knew just about everybody there. So uh, they had a bonfire out back where you could go out and smoke cigarettes. And of course, you know, Bill brought a little cigarette and a, and a cocktail better than anything else in the world. So people started bringing him his cocktails. For two hours, he stood out by that bonfire and he held court. Carrying him back home that night, he told me, he said, I can't tell you how much fun I had tonight and when I've had so much fun as I had tonight. He said, I thought everybody had forgot about me, but I realized tonight there was a lot of people that still remembered old Bill Brock. And uh, it wasn't long after that before that he did pass away. He, he, he was just a great man, solid salt of the earth. I mean, you know, they don't make him like that anymore, I tell you. He cared from his heart. He was just a super nice guy. Bill Brock probably was one of the nicest, most creative person, and probably had the most influence on gay people in Eastern North Carolina than anybody else and that if they had ever had the pleasure of meeting him, they would have been very fortunate. Fiction of a love we once considered impossible.